75% of the stories in this video were submitted directly to me. Want your story featured in a video like these? Go to AsTheRavenDreams.com slash submit or check the links down below. My experience with this entity took place roughly two years ago. The memories still shake me up to this day, if that's any indication of how terrifying these experiences were. I can't allow myself to think about it for too long out of fear that... Well, I don't know, actually. It's not like thinking about this thing will conjure it. I'm fairly certain it's tethered to the place in which I encountered it. At the time, I was in my senior year of high school and living in an apartment on the school campus. You might be scratching your head, so hang with me while I explain the context. And this wasn't your traditional high school. To avoid giving away too many personal details, we'll call it a private school. Because not just anyone is able to enroll. Another relevant detail... Several deaths have occurred on the property where this school is located. Decades ago, three people were killed in a type of natural disaster that my state is known for. I now speculate that there were either more deaths from this event that no one talks about, or there was another tragic event in the school's history that I'm just not aware of. The campus included dormitories for students from other parts of the state, as well as a small section dedicated to four apartment suites. Juniors and seniors got an opportunity to move into these suites for six to eight weeks. Basically, the only requirements were that one, you weren't flunking your classes, and two, you were capable of carrying out tasks like shopping for groceries while staying on a budget, cleaning your apartment as needed, cooking your own meals, just the ordinary living on your own stuff. I should mention that students who didn't live on campus but met the above criteria were included in the apartment rotations. I was one of these students. Of course, I accepted when I was offered a spot. I was thrilled to have gotten into the last rotation of the year, because my group got two more weeks in the apartments than most. However, the excitement turned out to be short-lived. I moved in in mid-March of 2019. My family wanted to accompany me to get a look at the place to make sure that I got settled in. I'd already seen the apartments, so I let them wander around while I lugged my bags into the bedroom and commenced unpacking. We then said our goodbyes, they left, and I abandoned my unpacking and invited myself to my best friend's apartment to see what she was up to. We'll call her A. Her apartment faced mine from across the hall, the other two being positioned the same way, but towards the front end of the hall leading to one of the main dorms. Not only was I eager to see A, but I remember something felt off. Like the air was too dense. This apartment was notorious for being haunted. One girl in my class later told me that when she stayed there, she felt like something was gradually draining the energy from her. She was so exhausted that she became very antisocial, although she wasn't a social butterfly to begin with. She would fall asleep early in the evening, even if she wasn't tired, and slept through her morning alarms on a regular basis. Another classmate said that items would get moved around when there was no one in the apartment but her. I tried to push these thoughts from my mind until whatever was here, if anything, gave me a reason to be concerned. I also didn't want to make a scene inquiring if I could switch suites with someone, in retrospect, I really wish that I had, but we'll get to that soon enough. The first week passed, pretty uneventfully. I had a lot going on at the time. 
I was taking a few college courses in addition to my high school workload, in a steady relationship, etc, etc. Needless to say, I was too occupied to consciously look for paranormal activity. I just felt that heaviness in the air, usually in the back of the apartment where my bedroom and the bathroom were. After the first week, the source of this energy must have grown restless and decided it was time to make some ahem, I'm here and the rumors about this place are true statements. I started seeing weird movements around my apartment, sometimes while friends were over, but usually while I was alone. I would see a foggy shadow with no definite shape, darting across open doorways that vanished as soon as it caught my eye. I would ask whomever was over, uh, did you see that? And they'd say they didn't and ask what I was talking about. And after explaining it the first time, we laughed it off on subsequent occasions. This carried on for another week or two. I was honestly starting to believe I was sharing my apartment with the mischievous ghost with no ill intent. But hey, life would be boring without plot twists, right? Just as my worry began to ebb, things took a dark turn. I remember one evening I had just finished cleaning up the kitchen after dinner and was laying on my bed on the phone with my boyfriend. I'll explain the layout of the bedroom because that's where most of the disturbing stuff went down. When you walk in, the closet takes up most of the wall to the left. I always left it open because it's old and the sliding wardrobe-like doors had a tendency to stick. The head of the bed is against the right wall, so that when you lay down, you're looking toward the open closet. There's a dresser across from the door, a nightstand on one side of the bed, and a desk on the other. Anyways, I was on the phone with my boyfriend, and I saw the blurry shadow darting around again. This particular time was unsettling, because it was moving around the opening of the closet right in front of me, and didn't poof out of sight like the other times. The energy emanating from it was hard to read, too. I couldn't tell if it was trying to be threatening or playful. My boyfriend sensed that I was uneasy. I told him I was currently watching the thing practically dancing around in front of me, and it wasn't going anywhere. I quickly left the room. Hell, I probably left the apartment. I don't remember. Something just told me that I needed to get out. My sweet mate was nowhere to be seen for the rest of the night, but I could still feel its presence when I returned. From that point on, I didn't feel like I was alone in my room. I mean... There had been a weird energy change all along, similar to how you can feel the air change when a storm is moving in. Now, it was like a person was in the room with me 24-7. When night came, I would find excuses to avoid the bedroom for as long as possible. I'd go hang out with friends or invite them over so I wouldn't be alone if the ghost tried anything on me. I would loiter in the kitchen making tea and sit on the couch passing time until I got up the nerve to go to bed. I pleaded with my boyfriend to stay on the phone with me until I was tired enough to fall asleep shortly after we hung up. Maybe I was overreacting, but this ghost no longer felt harmless like I had initially thought. My intuition has always been strong, and I couldn't have ignored it if I wanted to in this situation. This place set off serious warning bells inside of me. Unfortunately, my paranoia was justified when things escalated yet again. I had just hung up with my boyfriend who was waiting for sleep to set in. I was laying on my stomach, head turned to face the bedroom door when, insert crash noise here, my entire body jolted. My heart felt like it was going to beat out of my chest and I dove under the covers like a child and tried to catch my breath. My first thought should have been, what the hell was that? But I somehow knew 
with a paralyzing clarity what had just happened without even having to see it. This ghost slash spirit was a young, blind boy. The darkness had disoriented him, causing him to stumble into my desk. I can't explain how or why I knew this. The characteristics of this ghost being blind, male, and quite young, probably between 9 and 13 years old, just materialized in my mind with utter certainty. I know it sounds crazy. Not only did the fact that I could pinpoint information about this entity freak me out, it also confused me. Is it even possible for a spirit to be blind? I guess we don't know what will happen to us when we die, but lots of people believe we're restored to perfect health in the afterlife, or just cease to exist, so the whole thing, it didn't sit well with me. And no, there was no one else in the apartment with me. Nor could anyone have gotten in, because I always locked the doors at night, and I was the only one with a key. I was shaking really badly, but I managed to fish my phone out of the blanket and called my boyfriend, not wanting to be alone and knowing that he would still be awake. Again, I was so shaken that I don't remember much besides getting out of the damn bedroom and turning on all of the lights as I walked through the apartment. The next day, I told A and another friend, I'll refer to her as T, about the ghost boy. They didn't know whether or not to believe me, but they could tell how distressed I was nonetheless. I was more anxious than usual to go to bed after that. I started seeing it in the morning, too its translucent shadow flickering at the threshold of the closet. I got the feeling that it was watching or listening to me, and it taunted me with that stupid disappearing act. There one second, gone the next. Luckily for me, it was April by this time and a band trip was approaching. The trip involved traveling out of state, meaning I would be able to escape the suffocating paranoia that I was sadly growing accustomed to for about four days. I was still anxious to fall asleep the first night of the trip, but when I realized it hadn't followed me, I slept soundly for the first time in weeks. In case you're wondering, we went to Silver Dollar City that year and you can bet your ass I went on every roller coaster in the park, but I digress. Fast forward to the last day of the trip. Dread flooded through me on the long drive home. I think I still had about three weeks left in the apartment. I was exhausted when I unlocked my door and dragged myself and my overstuffed suitcase inside. But upon being hit with a wave of paranoia, I started a load of laundry and escaped over to T's place. When I walked in, she and A were watching a show and digging into some jerky and outlandish flavors that she'd bought on the trip. She offered me some, but I declined. I have a, a TMJ disorder, a jaw condition, and I'm careful not to strain my jaw chewing tough foods like this. This is good to know for later. Skipping to some time in the middle of that week, I was in bed and the room was dead quiet. I'm just lying there, teetering on the first phase of sleep, but still mostly coherent. And I hear a menacing click right next to my ear. My whole body went cold. My mind was screaming at me to leave the room, cover my head anything but just lay there like a statue. But I couldn't move. The belligerence behind the action was so freaking intense that I was frozen in fear. It literally sounded like someone had come up beside the bed, leaned over me, and snapped their teeth next to my ear. Now, I know that when you're on the verge of sleep, you can have involuntary movements like a jerk of the arm or leg, but I was alert enough that I would have felt my teeth clamp together, and I've never heard of that kind of involuntary movement happening. I've tried to replicate the sound myself under the same circumstances, but to no avail. I mentioned earlier that I have a jaw disorder. 
because of this, I sleep with appliances, aka mouth guards, on my top and bottom teeth, and it would have been impossible for me to make this sound. I lay there, terrified and barely breathing for what felt like several minutes, but in reality was probably 30 seconds or less. As my brain finally began to process what was going on, I lost it. I felt an overwhelming sense that I was in peril, and I went into a full-blown panic attack. Shaking, gasping for breath, feeling a mix of cold and numb all over, I grabbed things that were in close proximity. My phone, my pillow, a blanket, and I tore out of the room, slamming the door behind me. Beyond frantic, I stumbled out of that nightmarish apartment and into A's place. She thankfully kept her door unlocked at night, which was safe because the campus was secure and she has some medical things that having easy access to the apartment would come in handy for should she have some kind of an emergency. I collapsed in her living room, trying not to freak out too loudly so I wouldn't wake her up. I ended up falling asleep on her couch. It was too small for me to stretch out all the way, but I didn't care. It wasn't the last time that I'd run to her either. I heard the teeth gnashing around five more times. And that's not something you can just get used to. A and her apartment became my safe haven. Sometimes she was awake when I plowed into her living room. For those who aren't from the South or Central Plains part of the US where people say that, it means hauling ass, hurriedly carrying out an action. Other times... She would find me crashed out on her couch in the morning. To this day, I am so grateful that I had my best friend merely feet away throughout this whole ordeal. I honestly did not expect anything of this nature based on what classmates had told me. This entity was clever. It tricked me into believing it was harmless when that couldn't be further from the truth. Had I stayed there much longer, I fear it would have hurt me physically. I have a few theories as to why the entity became so malicious. Maybe it was angry with itself for crashing into my desk and giving away its identity. Maybe it was trying to use echolocation. Maybe it wanted to trick me into a false sense of security then scare the hell out of me for fun. I really didn't think it was a prankster for a while, but the, the teeth gnashing thing and the overall energy as of late, it felt pretty sinister to me. And I don't even know why it was so active around me in particular. Even if it meant no harm, which I highly doubt, I didn't find it the least bit amusing. And I'm glad I will never have a reason to step foot in that apartment ever again. I used to do overnight IT work for a handful of hospitals in a small town in the Midwest that, if I mentioned it, you would have no idea where it was. That said, I'm just going to say that it was in Nebraska and leave it at that. It was contract work and it was outsourced to a third party company. I was just out of my two year degree, so. I took the first job that I got offered. As previously stated, that first job happened to be a contract to hire position doing the third shift help desk for a group of hospitals. Basically, I would be expected to be at one of the sites and answer support tickets for this main site, as well as the satellite offices if they came in, which they rarely did. For the most part, I would just spend all of my hours at the main hospital and sit in the IT room from midnight to 8 in the morning, doing very little. There would be the occasional printer that I would have to reset or fix for the overnight nurses, but really, it was a simple job. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but hospitals are typically haunted. And I don't mean like, oh, that's spooky haunted. No, I mean straight up haunted by the spirits of the people that died in those rooms and cannot pass on. 
honestly, I could probably sit here and type a short novel of all the events that happened, but I think it's best to go with the ones that seriously spooked me. There was one night where I got a ticket for one of the aforementioned printers, which, honestly, were more hassle than they were worth. I got called down to help one of the station nurses connect her system to the main printer because it kept on giving her an error. I got down there, she tells me what exactly the printer is doing, and asks me how long it'll take. I tell her that it'll just be a few moments, and she informs me that she needs to go use the restroom. I tell her that would be fine and that I should have it done by the time she gets back. She walks away, and I get to work. After a few moments, I get that weird feeling that someone is staring at me. You know the feeling, that spine chill. I shrug it off and keep trying to get the drivers installed for the printer, when I hear someone faintly say, Excuse me. I look up and I see an elderly patient standing in the doorway to their room and staring at me which honestly wasn't that big of a deal. I was sitting at the nurse station, and I was the only person there. I looked up, and as politely as I could, said, My apologies, I'm just here to help with the computer. The nurse on duty just went to the restroom and will be right back. I'll let her know that you need help as soon as she gets back. I say this, she smiles at me with her wrinkly, beaming smile, and I think everything is copacetic between us. I sit back down and start back into getting the hunk of junk back to a functional state. After a few moments of me working with it, I get it to connect, and it starts spinning up as the spooler pulls the jobs. I patted myself on the back for another successful night, and leaned back in the chair. I glanced back up to where the elderly lady was and saw that she had closed her door. As soon as I notice this, the nurse on duty comes back. I stand up, and I let her know that everything is working again, and that it looked like it wasn't going to cause her any more trouble. I then motioned toward the room where the patient was and informed her that the lovely lady needed some assistance. When I said this... Her face literally went pale, and she asked me which room. I pointed to the room with the door closed and told her, that one. She then asked me to describe the old woman. I laughed and told her that she had glasses, short white hair, looked to be in her 80s. As soon as I tell her this, she then shows me what it was that she was printing. It was paperwork that she needed to fill out for a recently deceased patient. The picture of the patient was the woman that was standing in the doorway. She then tells me that this patient had passed away earlier that evening, and that they had just cleared her room. Obviously, I thought she was pulling one over on me with the patient, and playfully told her to knock it off. She stared at me with a deadpan stare, and then walked over to the room, opened the door, and motioned for me to look inside. I reluctantly did, and sure enough, it was empty. The room was sanitized, everything was clean, and the board was completely blank. Honestly, that kind of just ruined my night. I grabbed my laptop and went back to the IT closet. I didn't really want to deal with people after that one. Beyond that, and probably one of the other nights that scared the hell out of me, there was one evening where I was in the closet with one of my new co-workers that I was training. And this was about a year later, after I had been hired on full-time, and I was actually training this person to be under me. I had already explained how things worked, and he was just sitting there going through the HR video training. I was probably on Facebook, just waiting for a ticket to come in, so we had something to do. We were literally just sitting there in the quiet hum of the servers, when, out of nowhere, the lights in the server room shut off. My mind immediately went into worst-case IT scenario. 
I thought the server room had lost power, which would have been bad. The server room losing power means that the servers may shut off, and we have to manually check them all to make sure they turn back on with the emergency power, and that there are no errors. I look around and see that the server rack still has green lights on it, which meant that they were all good to go. I told the new guy to wait there, and I got up to go and see if the rest of the hospital had possibly lost power. When I got to the door, the light switch was off, like someone had legitimately turned it off. I shrugged it off and flipped the switch back to on. The newbie asks me if everything is okay, and as soon as I start telling him that it was nothing, the lights seriously flip back off. I slowly turn around, turn them back on, and start to walk backwards toward the desk. And I seriously watched the light switch slowly move from the on position to the off position. It was like a really weak person was slowly pushing it down with one finger, just nudging it slightly until it was off. That was enough for me. I told the new guy that we were taking a lunch. He laughed and asked what was going on, and I told him that, at that exact moment, we were going to leave the server room and go down to the cafeteria to take a lunch. I had no idea what the hell kind of spirit was having fun with us that night, but I was not going to agitate it any further. And I just decided to let it have its way. We went down, and we had lunch, then went back up to the server room. When we got there... The lights were back on, and they didn't turn themselves off after that. And while that may not be creepy to some people, it seriously freaked me out. Mostly because I was well aware of how haunted that hospital really was. I've been a nurse at our local hospital for the last eight years. If you're here long enough, you will come across a few ghost stories, maybe even experience one yourself. I definitely had my share since being there. I can name a few that were especially memorable. I will start by saying that it doesn't help that the hospital used to be an orphanage many, many years ago as well. So the main one we hear about is the Children of Death. We call them this because when a patient sees one of these kids, they end up passing away soon after. A couple of examples was one gentleman that another nurse walked in on as he was talking to someone, but there was no one in the room. The nurse asked who he was talking to, and he said the young girl that had just left. He said that she had brought in a card and he pointed at it. The nurse said she looked at the card and it looked like a young child's drawing of a person surrounded by flowers and people crying. We had no idea where it came from, as he hadn't had any visitors that day. We even checked the logs and his son came to see him the day prior, but no one that day. And his son didn't have any kids. A few days later... The man passed away in his sleep. He was there due to a heart attack, but he seemed to be improving. Another instance was an old lady that was there after breaking her hip. She said she was a medium, so she was always entertaining us nurses on duty. She gave us all readings and told us some interesting stories of past readings that she had done. Every once in a while... She might ask to pass condolences on to someone there that recently lost someone, be it another patient, or even our head nurse once. Her father had died suddenly, and we, the nurses, didn't really talk much about it, but this lady had brought it up. I thought she must have heard someone mention it. However, there was one instance where we received a nurse call to her room, and upon entering... She asked that we check on the woman across the hall. She claimed that she saw her walk out of the room holding the hand of a little girl. This was in the geriatric ward, so the patients didn't have a heart monitor attached and she was bedridden, 
because she was very frail and couldn't get up on her own. We dashed over to her room to see that she had passed. We were shocked, because while we were expecting that she would pass soon, we had no idea when, nor did we know how this other patient would have known. She couldn't have left her room, and there were no kids on this floor, so of course we had to go back and ask her about it. She said the lady looked spry and happy, and believed that the little girl was helping her move on to the afterlife. We thought at first maybe it was one of the children other patients have seen, but she said she was wearing modern clothing. A pink flowery dress with a huge flower in her hair. We thought it was a crazy situation, but we let it go. Later on, after the older woman's daughter came in to get her mother's belongings, the medium was being wheeled back to her room by another nurse when she stopped this daughter to speak to her. After giving her condolences for her mother's passing, she brought up that she saw her as she passed over and began asking her, the daughter, about her own daughter. She started crying, and she was shocked that she had brought it up. Apparently, her daughter died after being hit by a car while riding her bike a few years prior. She said she was buried in her favorite pink floral dress with a matching flower clip. She also said that her daughter and her mom became very close as she was her first grandkid, and when they lost her, it broke her heart. I thought maybe she recognized this woman from the news or something, but... How could she have known what she was wearing when she was buried? I don't believe much in mediums, but the fact that this little girl this woman appeared to be walking out of the room with matched her granddaughter, it made me just a little less skeptical. This is a family and completely true story. When my sister was 18, she decided to be independent and randomly left for Texas. She's prone to this kind of decision. When she was 21, she moved back home, married and with a two-year-old, or something like that. Nothing weird so far. When she returned, I was just leaving for college to another city, and I met her new family briefly. She, her husband, and her child stayed with my parents while they figured things out. A month went by and suddenly her husband, 20 plus years old, died from a heart attack. It seemed like he had some genetic undiagnosed heart disease and just dropped dead. My sister was obviously devastated and basically relayed the care of her child to my mom, and she again left to another city, but visited frequently. One day, while speaking to my mom, I heard my nephew say, There's the man. I asked my mom about this, and she said that my nephew was always talking about this man in the house that no one else could see. Even when they left the house, the child would say goodbye to this man, as babies do with numerous bye-bye sirs. Now, my mother told me that they sometimes saw a shadow, but nothing bad had happened, so they didn't pay any mind to it. This went on for years. The child was always talking and interacting with this man, who nobody else saw. Meanwhile, my sister was really depressed and never talked about her husband. No one really did. We didn't know the guy, and everything was so quick that we didn't interact with him. We didn't have any pictures of him or anything, and nobody aside from her had any attachment to him. Also, this was like 2006. Cell phones had cameras, but not a lot of memory, so we really didn't have any pictures of him. I'm stressing this so you can see that my nephew had no way of knowing his dad. Sure, he saw him until he was two, but now he was six when suddenly his father's brother decided to send an email with a photo of my sister's late husband, 
a photo that was saved and forgotten in the computer. The family computer had this screensaver that was a gallery of all the photos saved in the system, and that's where my nephew saw it, and instantly shouted, That's the man! I remember it clearly because, by that time, we all knew the man. Nobody saw him, but if something happened in the house, or there was a weird shadow, we said, Oh, it's the man, and we all said bye to him when we left, and hello when we arrived. He was already part of the family. So, we went to the computer, and showed the kid all of the pictures there, and when the photo of his dad appeared, he was like, that's the man that visits me at night. We were freaked out. He was elated. For a week, he asked again and again to see the picture. And my mother decided, against my sister's wishes, to tell him that was his father. Since then, he would talk about the man less and less until he stopped talking about him completely. Now, as a teenager, my nephew doesn't remember anything. Around the time my nephew found the photo, my sister remarried and took him with her. I think he was just looking after his child, and when he had a stable life, he left. But who knows? So that, my friends, was an honestly terrifying uh, collection of paranormal stories. Um, yeah, no, those were those were pretty freaky. I'm not gonna lie. Um, three of them were submitted to me. Thank you to those who submitted. One of them was from Reddit. Thank you to the Redditor who let me read their post. Uh, it's an anonymous story, though. So, I just wanted to say that these stories, uh, yeah, actually pretty, pretty spine-chilling, not gonna lie. So, all right. That said, friends, if you enjoyed this and want more like this, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button, leaving me a comment what you thought. You can also subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, turn to all, follow me on all my social media platforms, or support over coffee, Patreon, or channel memberships, patrons, and channel members get early access to my content. If that's interesting to you, for just a dollar a month, you can get early access. Pretty cool stuff. Not only that, it's a dollar a month you get early access, and you also support me and push me to do more content and keep me going with this whole crazy thing that I do here anyways. I love you all, and I hope you all have a beautiful day. I hope I'll see you in the next video. But until then, sleep well.